Hey guys, I'm Rodin. Uh, welcome to Bonnie Spirit and welcome to the weekly intuitive astrology reading. This is going to be from March 28th to the 4th of April. Now keep in mind, you know, I go over the astrology of, of all of this stuff, but some of the messages that come through when I'm channeling or doing the readings um, pertain to things outside of this week. So just use your own discernment as far as how to take those messages for yourself personally, okay? And again, don't forget to check out the website and Patreon and Vimeo and all that good stuff. I'll be doing a live for the new moon in Aries relatively soon. So you want to check that check up on that on Patreon because I'll list when I'm ready to do it, I like schedule it and then I post post it on Patreon. Um like the time and, and all of that. I just haven't decided exactly when I'm doing it. Probably Monday the 28th. Oh, you know what? No. Um <laughs> no. Maybe the 30th? I haven't decided. <laughs> I haven't decided. Uh, the week that I am covering does cover uh, the 1st of April, so we will cover New Moon and Aries as well. Um, but yeah, so just letting you guys know. So before I get into the cards, I also do the astrology. For those of you who are new, um, we got an interesting week ahead, okay? Um, there's a couple different, very different layers of energy, and so we're all gonna we're all gonna experience this differently. And when I talk about astrology, they're just potentials. It's like these are just potentials of things that you can experience or how to use this energy to your advantage. Like they're not nails in the coffin, okay? Because sometimes people get really caught up in it and they're like, no retrograde, ah, and it's like it doesn't have to be like that. Um, I do want to say this is a week to not make permanent changes. It's a week to just experience things. I mean, you could argue that like we should always just be in the present moment, but like this is beyond that. This is like, there's a lot of shifts going on. There's a lot of changes that are gonna be going on during this week and also under the new moon in Aries specifically. And it's really a time to just let that happen and be patient and just be on the ride and not try to force permanent changes because of, you know, some of the stuff that's coming up, because some of the stuff that's coming up is going to be really heavy and emotional, because we do have Chiron and Aries, we are in Aries season, and it is also going to be aspecting the new moon itself, but it's going to be really strong this week with some other aspects that are happening. Um, so yeah, we're going to have some deep wounds, like, coming up on the surface, and especially within our relationships where we're feeling emotionally dissatisfied, which is only going to be exacerbated um, by, by Venus. Venus is gonna be working with uh, Saturn and square the North Node. Um, there's, also, there's also a lot of stuff going on asteroids. Uh, let's not get stuck in that, but just, just hear me out here for a minute. This week, your wounds are coming up. It's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be hard. Um, it will be, don't resist it, like, because if it's coming up for you, it's coming up. So it's like, you can't fight it, you can't stop that if it's just what you, where you're at. But if you allow yourself to really express it and talk about it, there could be a really great potential for healing, which is also supported by Jupiter and Neptune being in Pisces, they're conjunct together in Pisces. Um, that's going to bring about some compassion, some understanding, some empathy, not just for your relationship with yourself, but also amongst people. Um, so yeah, so just keep that in mind, like, things are falling into place and still shifting around for a lot of us. So you can be inspired, you can make plans even, but like taking action on those plans is probably not ideal for right now if it causes permanent change. And what I mean by that is like buying a house, <laughs> right? Or deciding it's time to have a baby, so let's get pregnant. Like things that are really, really hard to undo, um, or can't be undone, um, not the week for that. Just experience your week. Allow yourself to kind of have some fun along the way. Allow yourself to be inspired to travel or go out and have a good time or start a new hobby. Or if you want to focus on like your spiritual stuff, the spiritual side of your life, this is an amazing week for that. Okay, an amazing week for that. But not a time to be trying to do like business stuff, um, buying houses, money matters, risky moves that are really hard to undo. Like, it's a time to experience and let those experiences teach you about yourself and about some possibilities that could come up for you. That's the kind of week we're in. And again, if you have some really, really heavy wounding coming up, like, you got to get it out. You got to express it. Like, just sitting on that stuff is like, it's not going to do you any good. Um, and also, with the, with the aspects we have right now, 
um, really positively aspected for healing and understanding from your relationships with people, especially if these wounds get triggered by people, like by feeling dissatisfied or feeling like your emotional needs aren't being met or feeling like you're you're being controlled, you're being dominated, or you're being restricted within your relationships, or there's even codependency stuff. Codependency stuff's like coming in a little bit this week. Um, talk about it. Talk about it. No matter how hard it is, talk about it. Okay. Just be mindful not to move into like super antagonistic, shadowy Aries war like energy. That's not going to be conducive to healing. Just being very honest with the raw, painful emotions that you're experiencing. Okay. Okay. So, enough of that disclaimer for what's going on this week. Just to kind of go over the aspects really quickly. So all week we have Jupiter conjunct Neptune and Pisces. And like I was saying, really great aspect to facilitate understanding and healing between individuals. Um, it's also really, really great for spiritual experiences. Like if you want to go on a retreat or you want to have like, you want to go and just like do some ceremonies, you want to go learn something as far as your own like faith is concerned. Um, great, great, great time for that. You want to get involved in spiritual groups or even um, activism, like helping people. So you also have aqua energy too great time for that with jupiter and neptune though working in pisces just be mindful that it's like it's really taking us up into more like looking at the bigger picture of things the more etherical side of things <coughs> that it might cast some illusions on like material things <laughs> like material matters like money housing work paperwork like stuff like that so just steer clear of that this week and enjoy the spiritual ride of Pisces. Um, this is also going to really help with your own psychic revelations. And it's also going to really help with um, anything coming up with your dreams and the dream space. Or if you want to start like trying to lucid dream or astral traveling, this is also a great week for that because of this aspect. All right. Um, now, the North Node. I got a lot of aspects with the North Node this week. And I was talking about this on Patreon, like what February to March to April is going to be like, where it's going to be like a lot of energy and a lot of like, a lot of like dynamic shifts, um, maybe even a little bit of chaotic energy, but for the positive, like putting all of us in a little bit more of a liberated place, um, a little bit more of an understanding of who we are and where we're going and what we value, really setting us up for the next cycle of lessons under this North Node period of time. And that is because of Saturn and what Saturn's also doing right now. Um, but that started last week, the whole being ushered into new cycles after a couple months of like being thrown into the fire, so to speak, of what it is we want and approaching those things. Um, so yeah, we're like, we're all kind of getting ready to be set on our path for choosing what matters to us. And basically that's gonna be put to the test through challenges. And we're gonna learn from it and we're gonna grow from it for the rest of this North Node period of time. Of North Node being in Taurus. But right now, for this week, uh, Jupiter and Neptune that are working together in Pisces, they're both sextile the North Node, which means they are unlocking doors, like for these paths that we're choosing, as far as what we value and what matters to us, um, you know, and what we actually can own and possess is going to be kind of an interesting thing. Even health and food, how our relationships are with those things um, are highlighted under that. But Jupiter and Neptune being here are really working for us in a positive way, helping us to unlock doors, having a little bit of like fate kind of stepping in there too. So again, just allow for things to shift and move around. Try not to resist any of that and try not to make permanent changes this week. Um, we also have Saturn, though, square the North Node, and that's, again, part of, like, ushering in these cycles. Saturn's introducing challenges and frustrations after we have had some time to think about what we really want and to go for that. We're, we've already made moves in the path. And that aspect with Saturn and the North Node will be getting stronger. Actually, all of these are going to be getting stronger, except Neptune's sextile North Node is strongest on the 28th, so strongest on Monday. Um, but yeah, Saturn square the North Node is probably going to be really strong next week. Probably peaks next week, like where it's exact, where it's really strong. Um, so just know that that's there. And Pisces is slowly giving us clarity, slowly giving us clarity. Now, talking about asteroids for a second, Pallas Athena is in Aries and is sextile Mars in Aquarius. We also have Juno in Aquarius, conjunct Saturn, there's Saturn again, in Aquarius. 
Um, both of these are really just helping us to find like a new level of, of, of power and being able to take action for our own sense of fulfillment and for our own sense of freedom, our own sense of joy and happiness away from feeling obligated or away from expectations, away from being bogged down in things that really just aren't for our well-being or really aren't to our nature, don't align to our nature. Um, so just really nice liberated energy going on there. But again, be inspired, plan, you know, let all that stuff come to you. Any changes you want to make that are really hard to undo or somewhat permanent in nature, I would put off until you get even more puzzle pieces uh, from this week, okay? Um, but again, totally up to you, your own free will choice. It's your life. I'm just here giving you, giving you the lowdown of stuff. Um, so that's everything that's going on this week. And just a little bit of like other flavors that are going on, like in the beginning of the week, uh, we have Venus creating some uh, aspects that are really highlighting that dissatisfaction in relationships, okay? Um, we have a square with the North Node going on. We have a conjunction with Saturn and Juno and Aquarius. And it's really going to highlight like how our emotional needs aren't met or not really feeling understood or cared about or just feeling generally dissatisfied within certain relationships. So that's going to be part of the beginning of the week. And I expect it's also going to lead to some major triggers and really highlighting some big wounding that will come up that will also, that Mercury and Aries, by the way, will push us to want to talk about, okay? And which will facilitate healing. So it's good stuff. It's like they're, it's happening in that way for a reason. Now, at the end of the week, we have Mars stuff <laughs> coming up. Uh, we have Mars conjunct Saturn, and we also have Mars square the North Node. Like I said, Mars is already working with Pallas Athena. Um, but at the end of the week, we're going to have more desire to, to go out and make some changes. So like I said, get inspired, get your clarity. And if you want to take some big, big action on things, just give it time. I'm not saying a lot of time, at least to the end of the week, uh, to let yourself get settled emotionally because some of you might have the wounding that comes up. Some of you might have some emotional shifts that happen because someone has been triggering the fuck out of you and then it brings up your shit and then you talk about it and then it changes your relationships, right? And your circumstances accordingly. So that's what I'm saying, like, let it play out. But the beginning of the week, Venus, heavy Venus influence, by the end of the week, heavy Mars influence. So it's an interesting shift there. Um, what else? Ah, Mercury. Mercury and Aries creating a lot of aspects <laughs> towards the end of the week. Also a big influence in the new moon in Aries. So communication, communication, communication. Um, really, really big key here to flowing with these shifts and flowing with the processing and the healing of some of these wounds that are taking place. And also is a great, is a, a great tool to fall back on as far as also getting yourself out to do fun things that are just fulfilling for you, like on a soul level that are just fun or just make you feel free and liberated and all of that good stuff. Um, a lot of social interaction, being very honest, um, could lead to some really good things this week. Just be mindful to not move into that very shadowy Aries, like war, I'm angry, ego, ah. It's about moving out of ego. This is about coming from a vulnerable, true place of pain and not just like a defensive, egoistic, I need to self-preserve and get away the threats sort of a vibe. It's it's to be authentic and express what it is you're feeling on a deep soul level, okay? Also some self-care is gonna be really important this week. Like I said, get out there and do some things that are really fulfilling for you on a soul level, okay? It's important to make time for that. Um, yeah, so that's everything that's going on this week. Uh, I always forget that I talk, <laughs> I like, I used to give, um, like what signs will be impacted the most. Um, so let me look at this really quickly. Let me look at these. Hmm. Contacts are dry. Um, Aquarius, I would say Aquarius 20 to 25 degrees is where it is definitely, if you have any personal planets in Aquarius 20 to 25 degrees, you'll experience the intensity of the energy the most here. Um, but if you look to your natal chart and your personal houses, if you look for where you have Aquarius 20 to 25 degrees is where you'll experience a lot of this stuff, okay? Now, Chiron is in Aries. 
that's where the wounding is going to be coming up here. But I think Aquarius is going to be where the trigger comes from. Does that make sense? So let's say, okay, I'll use my chart for example. It's just the easiest way to do it. Uh, so Aquarius for me, 20, 25 degrees, that's my eighth house. Is it? Shit, no, I'm not sure. I think that borders my eighth house and ninth house. I think it kind of falls in, in between there. Um, and Aries for this week, um, we're looking at like 10 to 15 degrees for Aries. Okay. I'm like, I'm literally trying to see it in my head. Um, okay. So for that, for me, Aquarius is like eighth, ninth house. And Aries, 10 to 15 degrees. I feel like that's actually my 10th house. 10th, 11th, I think they also border. Um, so I might get really triggered or feel very unsatisfied within any of my relationships that are within my 8th, 9th house. Like, so sexual relationships. Um, or even spiritual relationships, like or that could even just equate to like soul contracts if we, if we really want to look at it from a bigger perspective there. Um, those might be very triggering for my own personal wounding. And so for where Chiron is transiting, Chiron is transiting like my 10th house, 11th house, which would be wounding relating to those things. Um, has affected, thank you, has affected those things, has affected my 10th house and my 11th house, which is legacy. That's like, that's like long-term stuff, right? My wishes, my hopes, my fulfillment, my career, that sort of thing, um, where my personal wounding has been affecting that, that's where I probably will start to see a lot of change um, by way of being triggered through my relationships that are like either very sexual or very intimate or are very spiritual in nature. That's for me personally, but just to give as an example for you guys, okay? Um, and then Pisces for me is definitely in my 10th house for sure. Pisces, 20 to 25 degrees. So just to, um, and then that's going to be a supportive force. So that's very interesting, right? Because it's like, I was pretty sure that like that Chiron placement, like the, where Chiron's transiting, uh, is, is going through like my 10th, 11th house, and I'm getting a lot of support and healing through my 10th house. Um, oh, I'm getting kind of excited. I'm like putting all these like little pieces together as I'm looking at this like for my own chart. But anyway, coming back to you guys, sorry, I'm a little ADD as you guys know. So Aquarius, 20, 25 degrees. Aries, 10 to 15. Did I say 10 to 15 degrees? Yes, 10 to 15 degrees. Um, and Pisces, 20 to 25 degrees is where you'll be experiencing some of these things. And if you have personal planets in those placements, <coughs> you will energetically feel the intensity of the week more so than other people. Um, yeah, so there you go. Mm. All right, so let's go ahead and get in some cards. Whew. All right. I'm going to use actually my um, Black Moon Astrology cards. I really like this deck. It's kind of fun, especially when we're actually talking about astrology. So let's do it. Any messages or insights for this week? Anything we should be aware of for this week? is sun with spirit and the number one i am the self which is actually very fitting since we have a lot of aries energy this week um also happy birthday to like any you know aries people watching um i know i don't do the birthday readings anymore there might be a day where i go back to them maybe not no, no promises um i do kind of miss doing them though it was kind of fun i know you guys really missed it because i keep getting requests for them but anyway sun this is the soul this is who we are who we are. Um, really feeling that Chiron Aries energy coming through here. And also because we have all these aqua energies too, trying to liberate us into really owning 
who we are uniquely and like expressing that and like fueling that and feeding that. Um, I'm not surprised this is out here because that this is a week of of honoring our souls and honoring how our souls have been not just so wounded, but also what our souls have been neglected, like how they've been starved. I'll say it that way, like how they haven't been allowed to just be what they are through programming and suffering behaviors and insecurities and like, and all that stuff and all that stuff, right? Um, this is a week that can really help you resolve some things that have been keeping you from shining your light. Feeding the soul, letting the soul have some fun, and also allowing the soul to get some love and allow for any healing that the soul needs, okay? Let's see. <laughs> of course, first house the house of Aries. What did I say? It's like, it's all that stuff. Um, 25, we're going to a seven. This is associated with the body, with the vessel. Um, some of you might be going through some he like health stuff, and that's mostly because of the North Node Taurus energy anyway. Um, but some of you might be really focused here. But I feel like this is really just hitting home to my point here about what's the most important thing this week? Our souls. The, the self-care, the nurturing, the the needs and the wants of the soul emotionally letting our souls be be loved on be be cared about be healed um letting our souls experience some passion and some fun and some sense of fulfillment some exploration some adventure adventure is also gonna be really healthy for people this week um but it's about the soul it's also this sense of feeling at home too this is something that's been coming up in the collective like off and on, I've noticed, um, a feeling at home with your own soul, with your own self. Um, that's also coming in here. Any other messages? Any other messages or insights for this week? Ah, ye. <laughs> trigger, trigger, trigger. <laughs> Grand cross with provoker. 47, breaking down to an 11. Poke, poke, poke. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, I, mean, I already knew that energy was going to be here this week. But when we get triggered and we get poked at like that, Grand, Grand, Grand Cross Provoker also is indicative of tower moments. Of big changes or abrupt changes or violent chaotic energy. But to me, it just really feels like big, big, big pokes to get all of this stuff to come to the surface, to really address what the soul has been needing and what the soul has been wanting and how the soul needs to be taken care of. That's really what's coming up this week. And anything that's been like getting in the way of that for you is gonna be very highlighted. It's gonna be very highlighted. And if you've already been doing these things, like taking care of the soul, um, it probably won't be as crazy, okay? Any other messages or insights for this week? Oh, wow. Wow. Eighth house and Pisces. I don't mean to be so dramatic, guys. Sorry. Just being in me. <laughs> uh, that's deep. This, this to me just is like big soul transformation. With the eighth house, with the house of Scorpio, with Pisces being there, like when Pisces is in the eighth house, it's a very, it, it leans towards a very, very deep understanding of the shadow of, and experiences of, of transmuting, transmuting some of the deepest wounds and karma, like all of that stuff. Like it really takes it to a serious notch. Like if you're gonna have Pisces anywhere and you're doing spiritual work, like in the eighth house, in the 12th house, Pretty ideal for that stuff, okay? Pretty ideal for that. A lot of clarity coming out of Pisces, though. They really want me to emphasize that. While, while Mercury is helping us to communicate and with our own thought process, um, the fact that we have Jupiter and Neptune both in Pisces and working together this week in Pisces 
is helping us to take our understanding to the next level, to a deep level, to a soul level here, and make any necessary changes that need to happen, especially as it relates to our wounding. So, and with the wounding, I also really wanna emphasize, like no matter where Chiron is transiting for you, it's gonna highlight your personal wounds just in relation to those things. So for example, my Chiron is Cancer. It's not a fun Chiron. No Chirons are fun. Like no Chiron placements bring fun to the party. Um, but Chiron and Cancer is, it's not, in, it's not cool. It's like, Chiron and Cancer is like codependency and addiction. Um, it also speaks to like never feeling loved, like family issues with your mother, issues with family, like that's Chiron and Cancer, right? But Chiron is gonna be transiting like my 10th, 11th house. And so it's highlighting how my personal wounding, like those issues, are affecting those parts of my life, are affecting my hopes and my wishes and fulfilling those things, my friendships, my work, my legacy, that stuff. Um, yeah, so just so just do that for yourself on your own chart. So if your Chiron is, I can't give another example, it's really hard to think of an example, but your personal Chiron, and if you even resonate with that, you can even just check in with yourself and what your own wounding is, and then just look where Chiron's actually moving through on your chart in Aries, um, and see how your personal wounding affects that part of your life, okay? Because it's time to change this up. This is all saying like, we're gonna really go in there deep, real deep, real deep, and, and give a lot of TLC and care for the soul this week. That's what I'm seeing here. Overall, just to really, really hit home on how big these shifts and transformations are for the soul, we have solar eclipse with revolution. Now we do have eclipse season coming up. The first eclipse is, I thought it was May. Is it April? Wait, no, it's May. It's May. The first eclipse is May. I think it is a solar eclipse actually. So keep in mind this energy could be with us for a little bit. Um, actually, I think it actually will because we have new moon in Aries and then we have full moon in Libra. Yeah. And then we have the new moon in Taurus. So the next new moon, um, the next new moon after after this week is an eclipse. So this energy is going to be with us till our eclipse, till the first eclipse of the, of the year. First eclipse of North Node Taurus season. Okay. Eclipses are about big changes. They're about big transformations, big shakeups to your life. Lunar eclipses are much more emotional. Um, well, Sun can really relate more to like our physical reality, but as we've discussed, this is this is the effects of the soul and what the soul freaking needs okay you might have a big shift in your faith um your own perception of how you see yourself and how you see your life and how you see the world as a result of this if you let if you flow with it if you flow with it um i think the severity of this the intensity of this might catch you by surprise i don't know why i'm getting that vibe like if you even like if you hadn't watched this video like this might have really caught you off guard as to like how intense these emotions are that are coming up um, and the changes that can take place accordingly. I really wanna say communication is your best way to working through this stuff, not sitting in it by yourself, okay? All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, let's pull some tarot cards. Let's do some tarot. What deck am I feeling here? I feel like spellcasting. I've been feeling that deck a lot recently. So I had a conversation with my guides. <laughs> this video is posting on Monday on YouTube. Um, patrons, obviously you're seeing it sooner, but I did other videos today. And before I got my day started, I was sitting with my guides and they were being very funny. Um, <laughs> They, they told me, I was pulling cards, I was about to pull cards, and they said to not do reversals, and we had already been in this conversation about, like, separation consciousness, um, and I was like, we had a whole conversation about it, but anyway, I don't want to get hung up on the story. They were basically telling me that, oh, um, they were basically telling me that, like, pulling cards in reversals is enables separation consciousness and then i asked the question i'm like but isn't telling me not to do it like kind of like duality thinking <laughs> um and they said we didn't say it was wrong <laughs> and i was like 
Fair enough. So anyway, for those of you who like to pull cards or are thinking about pulling cards or are watching other tarot readers and are pulling reversals, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a totally valid way of pulling cards. It was just, I'm just heeding the advice of my guides is all, okay? Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I feel very chatty right now. Any messages or insights? Eww. Wow. Ace of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups and the Devil. The devil is restriction. The devil is, it's funny because I think this is actually really pertains to reading I did a little earlier. So that new moon energy, it is just energy this week is like really strong. Um, that hold, that restriction over us, what we want, our energies, it's there. It's the wounding, that devil, like it's the, it's the wounding, it's the Chiron energy coming up here. But with the Nine of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles, this is what you can partake in this is what you can enjoy you can enjoy new beginnings you can enjoy a sense of stability you can enjoy fulfillment you can enjoy fun and feeling feeling really great within just feeling fulfilled and okay like emotionally within yourself here but you got to face down the devil first i think it was over here you got to face down the devil first which is how these wounds are getting in your way. Okay. Four of Pentacles. Okay. Wow. And the Ace of Cups. Hold it on, man. That Four of Pentacles, I'm feeling a little bit of that devil energy with it. I'm feeling a little bit of that sense of control. I feel a little bit of that even like, like not allowing for flow, not allowing for receptivity, not allowing for things to move or things to shift here. Um, but the Ace of Cups, like I get it. It's like there's, there's this wanting and there's this yearning uh, for emotional satisfaction, right? But there's also this like this notion of if I if I hold on though, then like I won't lose what I have. Um, yeah, and it is a little bit of a closed off energy. But you can open yourself up for this. You've we've got two aces here. We've got two aces. You can allow yourself to open yourself up to the new and the fulfilling and the stable and the abundant and the fertile and yeah just all that very yummy soul satisfying things but you have to open yourself up to it and the devil doesn't let you the devil literally doesn't let you the devil is literally not allowing you to fulfill your wishes and your hopes here or at least not allow them to arrive in your life doesn't allow you to really see them doesn't really allow you to like embrace them and this is a week to get rid of the devil this is a week to allow yourself to finally open up to some of those things See what else wants to come out. Any other messages or insights for this week? Yeah. Now we have Temperance with the Five of Swords. That Five of Swords, I feel like, really represents coping mechanisms, um, defense mechanisms, I'm hearing mechanisms, um, and defense mechanisms that are born out of this, these woundings, okay? The Temperance is here to come in and be like, Usa, it's okay. Like, I feel like that's why Temperance is here. It's okay, you can, you can quiet down. It's time to like soothe your soul. It's time to put like some cooling ointment on there. Time to breathe in some lavender. It's like, it's time to not, to not allow these wounds to keep you in triggered states or to 
be such a, a slave to 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 these uh, woundings and triggered states that like it's time to be free of that. It's time to be free of that. When the temperance card comes out and the devil card is on the table, temperance always wins. It's a sign of you will move past this devil energy. But you have to allow yourself to really give in to what you feel. You have to allow yourself to experience your emotions and experience where this pain comes from and allow yourself, give yourself the permission to move past the fear and the trigger and allow yourself to be heard by somebody and allow someone to be there for you and allow for comfort and allow for love to soothe that pain and soothe that wound. And also allow, again, for all this like Piscean energy to give you a higher level of understanding of why you went through these experiences, why you carried these wounds in the first place in order to give you peace with it and acceptance with it to let it go, okay? Overall, we do have Five of Pentacles and we have the Queen of Cups. Reflection on this pain, reflection on these wounds, especially if it relates to like abandonment or feeling rejected or isolated or feeling like you're always losing, uh, especially if any of those wounds like relate to that. But this is reflecting and healing from that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and pull some advice. Normally do the shamanic healing. Yeah, let's just do that one. That feels right. Let's just do that one. advice for this week? Ooh, didn't expect that. We have inner journey and sexual energy coming in here um inner journey is understanding that like you, your journey is yours it's all yours and we have been talking about this whole time that like this is about your soul this week like first and foremost what your soul wants what your soul needs and any recovery or healing your soul needs as well it's putting your soul first this week and so inner journey is really hitting that home but it also is speaking of understanding that even if people because the five of swords is not just you by yourself it's, an, it's a reaction card. It's a reaction state to what's happening in your environment or what's happening within your relationships, usually relationships, but it's a reaction. It's not just you by yourself here. Um, in our journey card comes out when it's time to recognize that like everyone is at where they're at. They are, like people are who they are. Even if they're trying to hurt you, like they are who they are and that shouldn't affect who you are should have no effect there whatsoever that five of swords card it comes out when there's a feeling of that person and who they are and what they're doing as a result of who they are is a threat to me and it's that it's that ego response which is not always bad like our egos are important um but we also need to understand when they start to really inhibit us right and that's part of what this week is about but anyway coming back to it moving away from that five of swords state understanding that they are who they are i am who i am sexual energy is life energy it's creative energy it's that creative force which we have a lot of that right now because we do have aries going on we do have some mars energies going on this week as well um it's a light up i'm actually hearing charge up that's interesting i'm actually hearing charge up as you go through this process and allow for any shifts and changes to happen and any clarity to come to you, whether it is just psychic revelation or just through communication, it's going to be very healing and it's also going to be very liberating for you to kind of get more in touch as well with, with who you are on a soul level and allow the soul to shine a little bit brighter. Okay. Okay. I'm going to read these two because it's fun. Not all who wander are lost. At times we are so consumed with our personal journey that we project our journey onto another. Wounds. <laughs> Every soul arrives on this planet with lessons to learn and a life to live. For as many souls that are out there, there are many different journeys. Do not judge another's journey. Always respect where another person is on their path. 
Meet everyone you come in contact with where they are on their path. Do not insist they come to where you are. By doing this, you will not only expose those around you to your own healing vibration, but you will offer them acceptance without judgment. This is a great gift to both give and receive. And then we have sexual energy. In the purest sense, sexual energy is not an energy to be expanded from you. It is a state to reside in. The first and second chakras are the root of our sexual feelings. When you use this very potent energy to manipulate people in situations, you are doing yourself a huge disservice. When you expand your life force energy up from your first two chakras and incorporate the energy from your heart and your crown, you can experience the most complete and divine experience of sexual energy possible. This doesn't even have to include another person. When you can merge your connection to creator with your connection to earth without any filters or blocks between the two, you will experience a complete and true connection. We act as the conduit between heaven and earth, and when we can put ourselves into this energy at any given time, we are not tempted to use our sexual energy in a way that feeds our need for validation. Nor are we easily manipulated by another's outputting of sexual energy. This card is asking you to look at where sexual energy is directed in your life. Okay? All right, guys. I hope you guys got a lot out of that, and I hope you guys have a really great week. And again, don't forget to check out Patreon and Vimeo and the website, and I will see you guys very soon. And have a great new moon, by the way, as well, and take care.